Okay, you all already had a introduction to RAID uh, from uh, usage from computer uh, operating system perspective from Aaron, already explained to you the, what are the different levels of uh, RAID exist in practice and so forth. Uh, here uh, we will uh, look at that and, and kind of make some connection to the codes, uh, you know, erasure codes part of the RAID. And so uh, the contents will be, the, this will be based, so be, uh, there will be a brief introduction to the to the RAID and we will uh, also briefly go to the types of a RAID system, but some of the different types have been already discussed. I might skip through all those slides and go to the what is a RAID level and probably these two things we will we'll do. Then we will look at the erasure codes and we will look at the encoding and decoding. So we already have some idea of a, a Reed Solomon code now, how Reed Solomon codes are, uh, are represented in a finite field. Uh, and so we will see the connection, how it gets used in practice. Uh, and some case studies uh, I will describe where there is an attempt to use this framework to uh, de develop, a, um, um, develop a, some kind of a distributed systems for the, sto for the storage. And that's where the NCFS and the Hadoop are example. We will come up with a more a concrete example with the Hadoop things later in the demo, but uh, here we'll just uh, uh, explain that idea as an array code um, and with simple examples so that what is erasure decoding will become quite obvious. So RAID is an acronym for uh, redundant arrays of inexpensive disks. So when computers uh, you know, were pro you know, proliferating and there was a lot of need for uh, storage uh, and the RAID come as a, because the arrays were the inexpensive disks were cheap and so you can use the cheap disk to actually get more uh, uh, storage. So the main method is to virtualize multiple and independent hard disk drives into one or more uh, arrays. Uh, I, so main idea is that you know, it's not necessarily when you have a RAID, you have a same physical device, so you could actually virtualize the content. So that helps us to manage the uh, any uh, failures happening and so forth. So mo most of some of these ideas were also there in, in hardware uh, aspects and that's where the Reed Solomon codes have been used in uh, the past as well. But what is uh, so important is that uh, uh, developing this in conjunction with the development of computers like you know how with the more memory and, and the networking part of it that, that actually defines the uh, new, uh, new focus. So key design goals here is to achieve the increased data reliability and improved uh, I.O. performance and this fact has been emphasized by Aaron's lecture uh, in, the, in the past. So the early implementations of Varaid was done in 1990 uh, and they used very expensive controller boards with high performance uh, I.O. processors that were uh, as powerful as the host CPU. So RAID can be you now found everywhere now as a software feature in operating system or as a standalone controller providing advanced data integrity in high end storage area networks and also in mobile environments such as laptops, desktops and servers. So it is now found everywhere and so you know it's, it's it, it available as a system. So it hides how data is uh, kept inside but gives uh, a seamless access to the data to the uh, processor and, and the user. So, so that is the main right and there are uh, so main two types one is the software right uh, and hardware right. In a software right, right task runs on CPU of a you know, computer system. It shares computing power with operating system and all the associated applications. So it can be implemented only with a pure software uh, or as a hybrid model in which software makes use of some hardware targeted at increasing system performance. So, um, you can do that. Whereas a hardware RAID, it uses its own processor, memory to run RAID application. So it can be implemented using a, an adapter hardware integrated into system board and you know it can also be an external PCI based adapter. So, so most of the uh, you know things we, we discussed uh, other types. For the comparison, uh, software RAID is managed by the operating system applications. Uh, it can result in slowing down system performance. So migration to other OSs might be limited because once you have one of them, but does not require hardware controller, hence it can be implemented at a lower cost. Whereas the hardware RAID, because of it is implemented directly in hardware, it requires a robust RAID hardware controller. So it have a, having a bit of a computer in itself and increasing the cost um, offers data protection with multiple options, gives higher level of performance and robust than software RAID and easy to migrate uh, and replace. 
So, a ride can be configured depending on various factors like you know number of uh, um, uh, disks, critically criticality of the failure, a recovery of the importance of uh, ma maximizing performance. This de de determines the ride level. So, you have a ride zero, as you already mentioned. You know, ride zero is a is a you know simple disk. Uh, then there will be replication in the next level and so forth. So, they categorized into so basics and hybrid levels. Hybrid levels are created by combining two of the basic levels. The common ones that is, is uh, all there are ride 6, ride 11 and ride 50 and ride 60. Uh, so, some characteristics uh, are there in the following slides and these were exactly covered by the um, Aaron. So, for example, ride 0 is simply it has a striping. So, idea that we will need is a striping idea because from the striping idea unto the finite field and Reed Solomon code we discussed last uh, you know lecture. So, we can actually make a connection and we, we can start thinking in terms of how code functions, how for example, this can be used in practice here. Yeah? So, I will not go into details of all the uh, different ride levels we have because this has been covered by uh, Aaron. So, up to ride 5, ride 6 and ride 10. Um, some examples like in a software ride, uh, most of the operating system support software ride. So, in Linux distribution software ride is implemented using multitask driver and can be compiled into the kernel. Linux supports different levels of ride and can be configured using uh, m, uh, m dot m command line utility. The ride levels are supported in uh, Linux are ride 0, ride 1, ride 4, Right, 5, 6 and 10. The feature of these are similar to the OSS or hardware adopters. Now, let us come back to now erasure course. So, so far you know we have been talking about coding theory where you know some errors can happen, uh, but we have not specified actually what is kind of erasure and, and, and this is the time we do. So, today this is these are actually erasure course that are a major technology protecting data from uh, failures in, in erasure coding. So, erasure code adds redundancy, you know, parity to the system tolerance features. Simplest form is replication. So, simplest form of erasure replication as in RAID 1, where each data byte of data is stored in two disks. So, it has about rich 50 years of history from uh, communication systems. It is related to error correcting codes uh, and uh, where the parity bits are used to correct uh, an error and arise in the message 1, you know, across the channel. So, errors and erasers are different. Uh, because in erasure, the location of the corruption is known. So, whereas uh, in, in the past, when you, you know, I did not discuss about you know, the uh, decoding, I will come back to you, the complexity becomes quite simple the moment you know where the errors are there. If the errors are not there, then the decoding involves both first uh, uh, location first and then correction. So, error location requires you to use the syndromes and perform some uh, task on it, uh, some computations on it and determine the positions of the errors and then you go through the received word and one more time and look at the, uh, the actual magnitude of the errors in those positions. Whereas, now we know the locations. So, what is important is only just to get the uh, position uh, the, the actual the type of errors in those positions uh, and, and, and remove the error. So, this uh, means that it is mostly you will do some kind of an algebra. So, whatever computations we are doing with finite field, we will try to do the same thing for this and we do not do too much of a uh, theory for this one, especially for erasure. So, erasure is much simpler uh, and also it can do more. So, RAID 5 and uh, RAID 6 are forms of erasure coding that can protect from loss of at most two drives in the storage system. So, there are so the most complex uh, things that we, we come across so far is basically Reed Solomon codes now. Because in Reed Solomon codes, the way the codes are constructed, you take a, uh, if it is a NK code, so in, in the construction, any K by K matrix is non singular. And that helps us to recover data in K, you know, the whole data from just the K, K bit. Same idea with the same idea, you could also a particular node is failed. So, by using any K node, you can actually recreate the node. Okay. But of course, the main, main problem involves is actually the amount of, uh, amount of data that you need to transfer to repair it and that becomes a topic for the distributed storage and that is what we will do. So, but let us look at the erasure code because when the erasure codes are implemented in RAID, the controller is just next to the operating system here and so you can actually come up with more efficient solutions and just like there are lots of efficient solutions are there. 
So, in fact, uh, well-known Reed-Solomon codes can tolerate a broader uh, classes of uh, failure scenarios. Uh, you know, whereas in the previous RAID case, uh, uh, you, it can only probably tolerate one disk failure or two disk failure. Uh, and there are a lot of innovative um, uh, ways of uh, uh, erasure coding were invented uh, to make this uh, recovery much simpler. And uh, we will discuss one of them, uh, and I will point out some resources where you can do because this is a very rich area. Uh, is already uh, there in, in, in the things. So the, the some definitions again, uh, which I also uh, give you in the first day, uh, first day, an erasure coded storage system encodes k data blocks into m, m coding blocks, and during encoding, the contents of uh, k data blocks are used to calculate the contents of m coding blocks. So when m blocks fail, erasure uh, it's an erasure where it's considered to be unreadable. The failed contents are decoded. So when you, where a particular disk is unreadable, that definition can change and kind of thing. Sometimes uh, that load may not, you know, when, when, you know, that can change. But whereas in case of uh, rates, they are all pretty defined because it, it, it has its own definitions and, you know, because sometimes it, they, they are hardware read. They're, they're connected to the computer system. So if you're not reading means that that particular RAID is not functioning, so then you will have to actually move over data, recreate it. Uh, so that's what happens with the things. And the, the things looks exactly the same. So you've got a general file now that can be divided into k data blocks, a fixed size. And that will be like, you know, this, the, you know, you can think of that, that the files as been as a polynomials of degree k minus 1, you can start uh, adding and now encode it, put it in n different uh, nodes. So, um, so in order to understand this, I, I'll come back to say there is a k data blocks are there and there are m coding blocks are there. So, if you have uh, a node now, node data. So, whatever we do, uh, so in, in case of you know coding theory, we work with a symbol, and that is over a finite field. Now, for it to be used in a particular application like here, we need to, we, we have a lot of data. I mean, it will be some, some like a one block of data sometimes is 64 MB of data. So, you can't uh, have a finite field of such a big size to do it. So, there will be always a question is that when I'm, when I'm trying to arrange this data as a finite field, there is a question for a designer's mind is that what should be the size of the finite field? Yeah, right? That's natural, right? So in most uh, case of the files used is basically one byte or a word or a 32 bit number that that is so convenient because most of the memory comes with this these two things okay but uh, the when we look at as a, a coding theory problem we can actually use a whole lot of finite field structure and see the advantages we get um, whether we can implement all of them is a different case, but we can study them. So this is what the study of, uh, you know, when you are trying to use coding theory, people just uh, model the problem and they start looking at what all the possibilities there and, and you go depth into it. Whereas in the, when it is application comes into picture, then we need to look at the realities into account and we'll try to do that. So in this case, special erasure code, what happens is if a particular node has a data and uh, let us say each node has a, consecutive data. So we will only work towards like this, there are n nodes and there are m columns. So let us say this is m columns, and this is k nodes, uh, sorry, in this case is k data blocks. So each data block is now divided into uh, seemingly large data. So you take the first bit and first byte of all of this will be used as a code word. So if you, if you have a one code word, you can now uh, divide it to. So I can say that it's a one word means it's one MB. No problem, because whatever the finite field is there, it will be repeated so many times, okay? So you apply the same coding idea to different. Is that clear? Yeah? So this is what is done in, 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 a, in case of erasure codes. If a particular node, for example, fails, then you use <clears throat> other data, other information to recover the data. <clears throat> so we will see how erasure codes, um, you know, employed in distributed systems with the case study of two distributed file system, NCFS and HDFS. We will do a bit more on HDFS uh, uh, a bit later.
So NCFS is a network coded file system. This is a, it communicates regular read and write operations between user applications and storage nodes. And storage nodes do not need to be the intelligence or functional changes to, uh, to coordinate among themselves. So NCFS supports uh, various erasure coding schemes like write 0, 1, 4, 5, 6 and read Solomon code. So this is a layered architecture just given by uh, couple of who and, and et al authors um, from uh, Hong Kong, uh, that system, they have a, a implementation of that system, but we found, in, you know, when started off our uh, work with that, that system, but then some aspects of the stability and, and the networking uh, decisions uh, for, you know, we, then we changed over to HDFS. But uh, in order to understand how erasure code, the coding works, it's probably a good case study to look at how this uh, works. Uh, so, for example, it used a layer design to allow extensibility. So, you will have a, a main uh, three aspects of the design is it has three aspects. One is the file system design. This is implemented in uh, Fuse, uh, responsible for general system file operations. It supports uh, data repair operations, you know, addition, read, write and delete. That is the file system la uh, layer. And what is important in the coding layer, uh, we have a, there is a separate layer that takes care of the encoding and decoding function. In the storage layer, it acts like an interface to storage nodes. So the actual networking, uh, you know, so user applications actually uh, remain at the file system layer. The rest of the things are worked as a layer node. And uh, in the storage layer, it has a, a multiple options. You could store it in your local uh, area network. Uh, and in fact, the network could be, uh, you know, just a, you know, your own LAN connected to with each uh, few computers to each other. So uh, then the whole uh, performance depends on the network's bandwidth, etc. So this is how it is done. So this, um, uh, you know, NCFS uh, connects storage nodes over a local area network or an internet. So it can also connect to an uh, internet. So we assume that NCFS is deployed locally as a file system on the client machine and clients only see the mount, uh, mount drive. So the storage node could be a regular PC or a network attached uh, storage device or even a repository of a you know, storage provider. So NCFS uh, uh, transparently uh, stripes data across different storage nodes without requiring storage nodes to coordinate themselves to you know, doing the repair process. So it organizes storage in a hierarchical namespace and, and manages a file namespace uh, metadata. So the idea of the stripe is basically, so this particular, uh, so if there are nodes, K nodes and N, and this one is, uh, the, this is considered as a one stripe. So that means a stripe of data involves a couple of nodes and that's a stripe. So, but the block is uh, made, up, made out of, uh, you know, same uh, type of nodes in line, okay. So, but you know, the systems are, because it is a layered model, all of them, the metadata has all the necessary information to retrieve. So, how, how does, uh, for example, I have the picture here, in the Reed Solomon codes, it's probably now you can f understand how it is used. Here, um, uh, the, 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 for example, there are node 6 there. The stripe there is the first, uh, you know, first four uh, nodes will have a, data corresponding to information node and the last two nodes will have data corresponding to parity nodes. Uh, now with this one, um, so what is the length of the code here? 6 and a k, 4 and the two parity bits, okay. So van der Maanda matrix is uh, mentioned as 1, 2, 3, 4, it's just an illustration that of a representation of a finite field. There is a, a normally in, in such case you see two means it's alpha, you can uh, some element in it. So, but you will use some kind of a van der Monde construction uh, to do that. So, idea is uh, so if you have a k bit of information, so let's try to do corresponding Reed Solomon code uh, that we talked about. So, um, so if you have a message information is one. So let's call it A1, A2, A3, A4 is a message, right? Uh, and you have a, you have a generator matrix, what do you do? So when you do that first, it will be 1, 
So, this is a systematic representation of the generator matrix that we looked at because I did not tell you at that time. So, once we have a generator matrix given in, in, in the previous lecture, you could use the row operations and, and make it like a, a systematic form. And so, this is this one and the, the other this one, can you tell me now what is this will be? Correct? That will be the, the, the symbol for C1 and this here will be 1, uh, 2, 3, 4, but this is does not mean that 1, 2, 3, 4 is the actual numbers. Right? The, it will be, it will de depend on uh, the first symbol which finite field will be used, what is the primitive element and some element will be used here like maybe. So, you, uh, another way to think wherever you, you think it is an alpha because that all that is why also I gave you you know, so when we have a numbers like mentioned like this in a finite field, this is 1 and when you have another uh, word like this, if you go here shift of this, this is actually 2, you know, yeah, in, in, in the binary. So, sometimes they use this as an alpha, okay, but uh, you know, that is just to representation, that nothing, no spe specific thing. So, w all these are the, you know, finite field element and the you know the box which is with a dotted box is a stripe and the whole thing is a storage node and only part of the storage node is chosen rest are all can uh, can do but uh, depending on the raid now this particular reed solomon coding whatever the erasure coding happening with one strip so for example one stripe um, that will be um, that depends on uh, uh, for example, you may you, you, you may uh, move around like kind of do a permutation to do that, so that to have some kind of extra re resiliency and reliability. Because uh, you, you, so not every disk will have a, a part of a parity data, also part of the uh, data. So so in if for example, in this case, uh, this is a RS encoding uh, after uh, say three, six, or seven uh, uh, stripe, then everything will repeat. Uh, that is what I am saying is the, the, the symbols used in the first bit you know the thing I have not specified here uh, and it is generally gf 2 power 8 m equal to 8. That means the, the data that what you look it, it can come as a, a sequence of bytes right. So, when, when, when sim, some things are in the memory they are all in the sequence of bytes ok. So, each byte will be uh, looked out as a gf 2 power 8. Okay, so this is a, this is a kind of a little bit yeah that, that's kind of we, we won't use the the the, co, the RS code that mentioned in the slide itself for this application. Of course, we will choose n to be um, you know six, and in this case, definitely it is a uh, this is it's not a, a, a RS code what is given in in the slides. Okay. Uh, so, you, you know once you have a RS code of length n, you can uh, chop them, you can you will only consider the code which is of a certain smaller size and that is what it is. So, as you can see that when you do uh, it is only n is 6, but the, the, the n that is mentioned in the slide for you to hope it could be pretty big. For example, that is 2, 255. Okay, but we will only do the shortened version of that. We in our RS code topic before we use n to be one less than the C field size. Here it is not so. Obviously, it will not be. You know, we, we, it will be smaller than that. Yeah. In fact, we could actually generate with you know use only a smaller field. Maybe GF two power four is enough. Okay, that's just a choice. But it is always good to work with the GF 2 power 8, but that is faster. Okay, I'll, I'll, uh, you, can, you can have a look at the, the you know, general uh, uh, RS code bit later here. At the moment, you can think that as the whatever code I told you, it is a chopped off version of the code because the rest of the, the part of the code will also have the same property. And the idea is that you know, we are not correcting any errors. If, if, if whenever a some disk fail, we know that that particular disk is failed, we need to recreate it. And most of the time, you know, to recreate, for example, uh, let us say we only have a one disk failure, 
Okay. The C 1 is simply always the sum of all other, other bit right. So, when C 1 is uh, let us say the, the first uh, uh, node 5 has failed. Okay. Node 5 is failed means the uh, then you, you contact the other nodes node 1 to node 6 uh, node 4 up then node 6 then C 1 is basic, basically the sum of all of the 4. So, you can you can recreate it or if you have some, any other node is failed using the C 1 you can always recreate it. So, so that way uh, the recreation is, is just a linear algebra. So, so this is the kind of thing see, see you can say that A 1 exclusive or A 2, A 3 exclusive or A 4 is C 1 let us say. Okay, if one of them is not available, I can uh, I can use uh, C the checksum and the rest of the other one to generate it. If two node failure, then I need I need the other Mandelbrot ma 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 matrix to to recover it. Because then then there will be two unknowns. Then I need more equations to. to. So it's basically a, a system of linear equation solving. In this case, the erasure code. That way, it's pretty easy. Okay. So, this is the RAID 5 in uh, 6 works uh, this way. Here, uh, RAID 5 has only uh, this, this is the simplest uh, RAID you have in NCFS. It is simply the checksum is simply the um, exclusive or sum of the, all the previous nodes. Okay? Uh, uh, and deliberately, uh, this uh, checksum is being moved to different nodes uh, as a function of, uh, you know, uh, for example, in the first case, in the first uh, strip it will be the node 6 and then it will be permuted. So, this kind of a rearranger, rearrangement actually guarantees you, you can uh, uh, you know for example, uh, you, you can you, you can contact uh, for example, uh, you know con the, just to make sure that each every node will have data as well as the parity uh, as, a, as a fraction. Okay, so, that is the RAID 5 implementation. Then RAID 6 implementation uh, looks at this way and the equations are bit different uh, and it, it but then uh, the way it is coded is in this form. This is all a RAID 6 in NCFS is in the same it, it, it follows the same structure that I mentioned there. So, in practice um, the HDFS is a I think we will come back with the HDFS uh, erasure codes in practice. Uh, one of the uh, you know one of there is a excellent uh, presentation by um, Planck and et al in Uslix magazine and that has a uh, lots of information about how actually erasure codes in practice. So, I will refer to that for more uh, more things. So, HDFS is an Apache project that supports distributed storage and processing of huge volumes of data built on a map reduced paradigm for computations and large data sets. So, erasure code functionality was first introduced into Hadoop as a contrib module. It supported RS code and a simple XR code. Okay, so we'll, uh, so there has been other implementations on top of it, and namely, there is another. Uh, what we do is that we'll take up the RS code, and there is some idea called adding a local parity, which I'll come back and, uh, and explain that in another one, uh, and also block array codes, which are basically uh, treating all these blocks as a as an array and creating uh, parities, uh, either row parities and or column parities. And so, in case of uh, uh, failures, uh, you you have uh, more options to you have options to only contact the local nodes to recreate the nodes. So that's what called the, uh, the there are two things. And the latest version of the project Hadoop 3 erasure code now module performs the code computations faster by leveraging on a storage acceleration library. Uh, and this this supports some of the modern developments. We are already have a Reed Solomon code faster version and also another uh, code. Uh, which we call it a regenerative code in the framework I explained uh, and that is uh, just modifies Reed Solomon code a little bit uh, and, and based on the pipelining concept with some kind of a pipelining which they call it as piggybacking that helps you to reduce the bandwidth through the, uh, in, in the restoration. So, some of this this is in, in practice now erasure codes are there. So, Whatever the distributed storage codes uh, uh, innovations has to work under in, uh, in, in this in this space. So it started off with uh, a simple erasure codes, and then the next you go to RS codes. So we'll try to understand some of those things, and then now with uh, with because now these uh, uh, distributed storage nodes are deployed over the network. 
So, it requires some other other extra functionalities and that actually comes up with some, some frameworks I have discussed. And there are some other future uh, framework also we will discuss later. So, HDFS has a you know master uh, slave architecture. So, this is a Hadoop distributed file system um, that uh, stores file system metadata on the name node. So, you can say that uh, name node has a master and it, it uh, remembers which are all the data nodes uh, that uh, that uh, it coordinates and the file uploaded to HDFS is stored as blocks of size 64 MB. So, each block that I mentioned same idea has 64 MB by default and erasure coding the file is divided into sets of uh, something called stripes. Okay? Now, HDFS write module implements uh, erasure coding logic and the blocks in a stripe are encoded to calculate the parity blocks and stored separately in, in, the, in the file system. So, after erasure coding, uh, so what happens is that HDFS write basically it was not uh, designed mainly for storage or anything. So, main thing is to actually distributed computations. So, when, uh, when, when you have such, so this HDFS comes with a capability of replication. So, when a, a distributed file system is stored in the, in the nodes, um, each block is replicated thrice. So, that means the name node knows. So, if there is a particular block in a one machine, then uh, name node knows exactly which are the other two nodes that has this copy. So, so the replication well, what happens is that for raiding operation, when you are raiding after the after this replication, the replication is set to one, slowly the system removes the replication and starts writing the file. And writing the file happens based on the read Solomon code logic. Okay? So, so, the read module also handles the degraded read uh, requests that are directed from HDFS, in which case uh, the requested blocks are reconstructed on the fly. So, when degraded means that you send out a read request and you do not get it in particular time, then you do not get it that time. Uh, the system needs to be degraded, uh, you know, it needs to, uh, it needs to uh, recreate it and, and that will be done on the fly. So, both encoding and decoding makes use of a parallel stream reader that helps reading stripe blocks from data concurrently. So, you can, uh, uh, that that is possible and the encoding decoding operations are carried out as a map reduce jobs on the cluster. So, when we do the map reduce uh, demo and, and uh, understanding thing that will become much more clearer there. So, this is, the, this is how the HDFS file system, file system works and whenever a degraded read happens, the read node uh, actually the, the, there are a lot of erasure code encoders are there, there is a parallel reader, it works in, in this fashion. So, uh, degraded read is uh, you know uh, there is a um, in, in a distributed file system, name node or a, a computing node wants to read a particular file and the data may be or may not be available at that time. It could be, uh, you know, as Aaron mentioned in the uh, things, it, there could be many things could happen. Your data node itself may be down, or there are uh, it's not able to read properly, or the node that is that is responsible for it may be very busy. So uh, other systems will not know whether the data is coming or not at that time. The, the things are degraded line. So it could be it could happen many uh, for many reasons. Okay. So, now let us go back to you know how the erasure coding done with array codes which is just an extension of a, a simple parity check codes we have studied before. So, array codes are motivated by the you know desire to avoid Galois field arithmetic. So, remember most of the time we, we did this today with the Galois field and, and we wanted to make how to implement a Galois field computation efficiently. But uh, in the past, uh, when uh, people were designing uh, Hadoop, uh, this RAID system, they would, because the ex, you know, exponential, as it is very expensive operation, either sometimes, you know, in, in any finite field you do, if it is addition is become simple, multiplication will be hard. And if you arrange it in a way where multiplication is simple, addi addition becomes complex. So, it is always a, a, a problem with the, with the thing. So, people thought maybe you could do, but that is not so in modern game modern uh, storage. So, modern storage computing over G GF uh, 8 or GF, uh, G Galois field is not a big problem. But in the past, uh, people tried to do so when they designed array codes, you know they tried to avoid Galois field multiplication. 
And one of the interesting code that I thought mentioned, so for example, when we do all this, you know, the Reed Solomon code, if, if the k bits are there, uh, k, k uh, nodes are down, I can always, when, uh, sorry, out of n nodes, uh, if, if k nodes are alive, I can recover the data. So, okay, n choose 2. So, it is a, it gives a very strong guarantees. But in practice, most of the time, you lose one node failure, occasionally two, not many. So, people need to come up with a quicker solutions for a single node failure, etc. And so, in the past, this is an approach, what's called an array code, which basically takes the data into a matrix. So, nodes, you know, for example, you have a nodes and the parity nodes, maybe array codes, you can also have a parity in both, both directions, okay. So, this is n1 to n2. So, the parity codes are created as an array. So, each uh, node will, uh, nodes uh, stripe, you know, using the stripe, you create uh, a parities and so, sometimes using the parities, uh, you can also have uh, extra nodes created using the both the column and, and, and the row parities. So, one of the codes, I mean, array codes are interesting and um, the solely device. So, for example, if you go to tutorial by Planck, you will see uh, lots of many different um, schemes uh, designed for this purpose. But just to kind of uh, motivate the interesting part, I only give an example of a one code called even odd code. So, this, this does not, you know, all these, all these uh, erasure codes, it can take, tackle more than one, one node failures, two node failures, but never use any uh, Galois field arithmetic. Very simple. So, the only thing that is required is exclusive all, which we all know now, okay. Let us try to, I will try to give this, uh, uh, you know, very easily uh, with, with a simple one, let us see. So, it is a systematic MDS code, which is, which is also Reed Solomon code, also called MDS code, which is maximum distance separable codes. So, let a, you know, what the stripe here we do, the stripe is R rows of W bit symbols from each of the K disk, okay. So, uh, this is an example. So, first you need to get to an example of a, of a stripe here. So, the stripe means that you have a disk here that uh, each uh, you can divide that into W bit symbol. So, this is exactly the way that I am explained in the previous as, as a stripe. Uh, uh, and so, based on the, for example, the stripe here, this stripe will be used to create C00, C10, two, co uh, you know, some kind of parities that helps to recover in case, uh, you know, one of them, uh, for example, a particular node is down means uh, the entire this uh, array will, will, will not be available, okay. So, the, the, this is an example of a stripe with k equal to 6, or 3 is k is equal to 6 and 2 parity nodes uh, and you have a length of the code obviously is 6 plus 2, 8 uh, and the array length is r equal to 4 here. Okay. So, this is just an example and, and so people come up with innovations in actually the way you compute this one such that in case a node fa a one node failures then it should be easy to do. So, invariably this is simply the exclusive R row ac across the rows. So, if this, if this is exclusive R, so if a particular node fails, so basically you contact this and all other nodes you can recreate it. Okay. And since this uh, kind of RAID controller is provided within the hardware thing itself, it, it will be actually wired it to do this very efficiently. Okay. So, one node failure is very easy. And some of these complex codes were used to actually handle more than one node failure. And even our code is one such one which does that and, and we will look at it. And, I will go I'll explain this in, in, in a way. So, the even our code example always happens with k equal to prime number. Okay, so, if you want to understand, so now that you know the prime numbers and few things, now you should be able to follow the paper by the, um, you know, the thing that I mentioned here from uh, tutorial, fast tutorial, you can actually under, understand and there is also a, a paper at the end of the presentation that can be used to uh, understand this. Um, uh, read the things, why k equal to four, 5 is, is a prime number is needed. So, always we, we, we will, it, it will be quite obvious in, in a minute. So, so the first fast we do, so we have m equal to 2, 
So, these mm, two are a parity disc, this P and Q are the parity disc. Now, this is because even this name, the code is named even odd because it only adds two redundant discs and it uh, this, this is calculated in a particular way uh, which is even the e, all even columns, uh, even diagonals and odd diagonals are related and that is why it is a it is written as an even odd code. Okay. But the interesting thing is that uh, this k is equal to 5 then obviously uh, it will have the uh, L r equal to 4 which is a 1 less than the, the k equal to 5 okay. and there are two more things are there. So, this particular uh, code is explained using how we, so if we can uh, tell you the, how the parity is computed p and q then you will understand actually whether it can handle uh, one node failure or not. I okay, will try to explain. So, here the p drive is calculated, uh, the p drive is calculated as simply as the XOR parity of the lines. So, for example, all the data here, so the w bit symbols used in, in one, all this data are XOR and stored here. Okay. So, p, the, the creation of a parity for p is straightforward. Okay. So, the, the lines indicate that all the W bit word uh, uh, along this stripe is simply XOR and, and stored here, correct. Now, using this, you can easily imagine now if there is any, um, even if, uh, for example, any one node fails, you can always use this to recover it. Is that clear? Yeah, that is a simple use of a parity check code, nothing more. This is not a because it is, remember, the, this has to be very simple because it has to involve only XOR, nothing else. Now, the thing is, the interesting thing is to how to compute Q. But this is really to take care of a two error, two, uh, two node errors. So, any two um, uh, you know, disk fail, you should be able to recover it and using only XR function. That is interesting, right? So, this is, it requires a lot of mathematics to actually come up with this design, but let us see one of the simple idea. What it does is that the parity Q is first calculated as this. So, what you do, you would start with, you know, arrange all this disk in D0 to up to 4 in this case which is d k minus 1. So, the, the exactly the diagonal in between you know the this in d 1 and that we do not, so we actually take it out and store it in a particular one. So, it, along this diagonal from d 1 onwards upwards calculate all the sum of w bit words and store it in s, but do not use it at all just keep it as a s and that is basically the row or the diagonal x or sum check sum. So, that is kept as separately. Now, what the Q drive does is that afterwards it does intelligently, it starts from now the top line. So, you can see the, the even and odd are, uh, uh, so obviously there are actually 4 by 4, there is a k times k minus 1 divided by 2 uh, uh, different things. So, in this case there are exactly 1, 2, 3, 4 different um, diagonals are there. So, they go along for example, here odd number 1 and then after the diagonal all the odd 1 you see. So, it is D 0 and D 2 all this added together uh, and it uses the, the S, it is S as a, as a uh, the same value to create a parity here. So, it creates a parity of first diagonal and the second diagonal along with S and it creates a parity. The second one, then, then the second diagonal and the uh, third, you know, the uh, after the middle diagonal you go around the next one, you keep adding them together and store here. And the same way the third one, then, then you look at the third one from there and the last one is directly here. Okay? So, it is what is you notice that is when you are computing this kind of a parity for Q, you always miss one drive. So, for example, the computation of this misses. Yeah, so, this drive is calculated and this and this are used, so this is missed. The computation of uh, blue uh, you know parity misses for example, 2, 2 this, this misses this. The third one it actually misses the last two, the fourth parity misses the last one. So, this has been array and for that you need uh, the, the current condition that you know the k has to be 5 prime number in this case. Okay. If it is not prime also they can make some, some arrangement, but the main idea is that uh, in case all the rows are generated uh, as a checksum created in P things, but in the Q you, you actually use a diagonal parity 
uh, and you, you use the diagonal parity, but you miss one diagonal because you will exclude all the one of the main diagonals and you st store that value in S. Okay. Then relate the rest of the other symbols using this logic. Okay. Is that clear? The checksum in the first uh, bit in the Q depends on you know all the diagonals that the, you know that goes to these these three drives. Okay, but of course you would have computed yes ahead of that. So after computing all this, okay, then you have a values for here and here. Can you compute yes without having access to this? That's the thing that if you think, then you you have the solution. So for example, this S is used only to create parities, but it's never stored anywhere and it's, it's abundant. But I say after it has been coded one, can you create back S, which is basically the sum of all exclusive uh, along the diagonal. So let's take the XRing of P and Q, or XRing of all the values in P. What does it indicate? It is the exclusive or of all the symbols in this one. What is the XRing of all the Q? It is the exclusive or of all of this except this diagonal where, where the S was computed. So when I add an exclusive or of this, what do you get? It is exactly the S. So that, and that was used to generate the, the parities here. So in some sense that I generate this parity with respect to some quantity that runs through for uh, all, 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 the, all the drives. So this will be used to recover in case more than one drive wise. So single node failure is easy, it can be recovered by a P drive, but let us take the double node recovery, that is a bit tricky. So the double node recovery uh, goes with D1 and say for example D1 has failed and also D3 is failed. Okay? So when D1, so this is the, the middle one is failed, D0, D1 is failed and D3 is failed. Now first you compute S which is simply XR sum of all this, so that can be computed. Then after that you start looking at the logic of the checksum created by Q. So you can start with the first one uh, for example here um, and through that you will know that say for example this one, so you get there is a one unknown and there is also this one there is one unknown. So we, we using these two equation I can now create these two. So once I create that and then you go, so these two recovered bits can be used with P drive contents to decode two more bits. So for example, because now that is there, you can, uh, you can actually do the two more one. Now once, now you have more, more, more uh, things are available, then you look back into the same kind of diagonal checksums. So using this diagonal checksums, now you can actually diagonal more and that helps you to actually uh, find out using P. So by repeatedly using checksum from P and Q, you can finish it. So that is, that is what he does, that is called even odd code and it is still popular with many, right, and that is, it has been used. So occasionally for, you know, it will be very fast to recover one node failure, for two node failures you can do it in this way. And it, it, it does not use any Galois field arithmetic, it is just simply um, um, exclusive R function. So what are the things we discussed in this one with the set of nodes is basically what is RAID, a redundant uh, array of independent disk and types and levels of uh, different RAIDs like the level, levels of resiliency that each of them avoid. Then basics of erasure codes and we showed also the difference between what is erasure decoding and error decoding and we looked at an example of an array code what is practically used. So in array code we have a now a stripe uh, that uh, uh, goes through the multiple uh, multiple uh, nodes, but uh, you can actually generate a specific type of parities that helps us to recover certain type of errors much easily than others. So we are, but of course, uh, most of these will have limitations in the sense it can only take take care of one or two nodes uh, failure. And the Reed-Solomon codes are the best uh, uh, gadgets to uh, objects to uh, take care of any general failure because. Uh, that will that will have a minimal uh, you know it has an MDS property so you could, it has a best property but on the other hand when it is uh, used in conjunction with uh, the distributed storage when the nodes are distributed in a network the repair problems become severe and that requires a new approach to this and what is new and all these things we will consider next. Um, so we are now, uh, in fact, at this point of time now, 
So this is what, what we have with the rate. Now from there, now we will look into the new area of a regenerative code.